This lesson is about understanding the difference between nominal and real exchange rates and why the real exchange rate is important. The nominal exchange rate is the price of one currency in terms of another. The usual practice is to express it as the number of units of a currency it takes to buy one US dollar. This creates some confusion when people from other countries are using American textbooks since in the text that exchange rate is the foreign currency price of the local currency whereas for the rest of the world the convention is equivalent to the local currency price of the foreign currency. So a weakening of the currency will be reflected by a rise in the exchange rate. Whereas the nominal rate reflects the value of one currency in terms of another, the real exchange rate is the value of one country's products in terms of those of another. Not how many Malaysian ringgits it takes to buy a dollar, but rather how many Malaysian semiconductor chips it takes to buy an American Budweiser. To answer the latter question, we need three bits of information. First, how many American dollars does it take to buy the beer? That is, the US price level. Second, how many Malaysian ringgits it will take to buy a US dollar? That is, the nominal exchange rate. And finally, how many semiconductor chips have to be sold to obtain a ringgit? And that is determined by the Malaysian price level. To understand this better, let's put in some actual numbers. If you will forgive some rounding, in the United States, a bottle or a can of bud can be had for around one dollar. Currently, the quoted exchange rate for the ringgit is close to three per US dollar. And we'll use a price of 1.5 ringgits for a semiconductor chip, not far from the actual wholesale price for some types of chips. So, how many Malaysian semiconductor chips have to be produced in order to import an American beer? One dollar for the beer, at three for one, three ringgits for the dollar, and at one and a half ringgits each, one can earn the three ringgits by selling two chips. So the cost of the American beer is two Malaysian chips. That represents the real exchange rate. But the concept is meaningless as an absolute number. Its importance comes from when the value changes. Suppose there is a rise in the US price level, so that it now takes two dollars to buy a beer. At three ringgits per dollar, you now need six ringgits, for which you will have to part with four chips. The cost of the beer has gone from two chips to four. The real exchange rate has risen, even though the nominal rate has not moved. This means that Malaysia has suffered a real depreciation since it now takes more of its devalued product to buy the same beer. Suppose instead there is a nominal depreciation of the ringgit. It weakens from three ringgits to 4.5 per dollar. The US one dollar needed to buy the beer will now cost four and a half ringgits. At the prevailing price of chips, this necessitates selling three chips. At three chips for a beer, instead of the previous two, this too represents a real depreciation of Malaysian products. For the final exercise, suppose that the price level rises in Malaysia, but there is no nominal depreciation and no change in US prices. Let's say that as a result of the rising Malaysian price level, chips can now be sold for two ringgits instead of the previous one and a half. At this new price level, it would require the production of only one and a half chips sold at two ringgits each in order to raise the three ringgits needed to import an American beer. The smaller requirement in terms of chips reflects a real appreciation for Malaysia insofar as its production can now obtain a larger amount of international goods. Summarizing these effects, a real appreciation, a fall in the exchange rate, could come from any of a decrease in the US price level, a nominal appreciation of the ringgit, or 
a rise in local prices, other things remaining unchanged. These influences on the real exchange rate can be captured more clearly by using a formula. The real exchange rate is the product of the nominal rate and the foreign price level divided by the local price level. Let's test it using the numbers from our example. If the nominal exchange rate is 3, the price of the foreign product is 1, and the price of the local product is 1.5, then we get the same two chips that is, that it takes to buy the bear. Once again, remember that this is just an index number, so its absolute value has no meaning. But now that we have the formula, we can see again how the events discussed earlier would affect the real exchange rate. The fraction will now take a lower value if any of the terms in the numerator fall in value. The price level in the foreign country or the nominal exchange rate. Or if the local price level in, in the denominator takes a higher value. The formula also reveals that it is relative changes in these components that matter. If local inflation is greater than the rate of nominal depreciation, the real rate appreciates. Similarly, at an unchanged nominal exchange rate, if local inflation is greater than inflation in the foreign country, again, there will have been a real appreciation, meaning a fall in the real exchange rate. So why is the real exchange rate important? Because it helps consumers and producers to allocate scarce budgets and productive resources. Let's consider again the trade between Malaysia, the home country in our example, and the United States, the foreign country. We assume for starters that domestic consumers are dividing their consumption evenly between domestic products such as semiconductor chips and imports such as beer. If events unfold such that it now takes more chips to buy a beer, local products have depreciated in relative value. They have become relatively cheaper compared to imported products such as American beer. Consumers will switch some of their expenditure from the relatively more expensive imports to the relatively cheaper domestic products. Import demand falls. What about foreign consumers? They will face an identical situation. Malaysian products will have become relatively cheaper to them too, so they will switch their consumption from their own products to the Malaysian offerings, which Malaysian producers will have to export to satisfy. So exports rise. The change in relative prices will motivate producers to underscore these trends. Firms at home can devote their productive capacity to producing either for the local market or the foreign market. With foreigners now paying higher prices, producers will shift to export production. Foreign producers face the identical relative price change. So they too will shift production from satisfying the less valuable Malaysian market to producing for their own market. So Malaysian imports fall. So what have we learned? Whereas the nominal exchange rate measures the international monetary value of your currency, the real exchange rate captures the real international value of your products. Whenever local inflation exceeds foreign inflation, and the rate of nominal depreciation, there has been a real appreciation. It is the real exchange rate, not the nominal one, that signals consumers and producers how to allocate resources. And a real depreciation stimulates a fall in imports and a rise in exports.